In this movie I want to talk about some changes that we've made to wall styles in Vectorworks 2015. Previously you were presented with one big long list of wall styles divided into new and existing categories and you had to go and then edit that file to strip out the ones that you probably didn't want to use to simplify the list down a bit. So what we've done in this version is to provide four alternatives for what the list uh, what list is presented and this would be a full list and by the by default we have a full list so you can see that full list here we then have a basic list which is this list here it's much shorter and then we have both the full list and the basic list in a bounded style so this would be if you were using stories now the I'll talk about uh, stories in a moment but the bounded list you can see that each wall style ends with a, a lowercase b. So instead of being AAC 100 uh, external, it's AAC 100 external b for bounded. So that's how, how you can tell whether you're using uh, a non-bounded or bounded uh, wall style. So this list is obviously unbounded and that's the default list that ships with Vectorworks. So if we were to select the wall tool and click up here you're going to see that this list here is starting off with this list here and it includes autoclaved aerated concrete, brick, brick cavity, brick veneer, um, concrete, concrete block, um, concrete footings, they're new, uh, curtain wall, they're new, all of the existing wall types, uh, we've got the New Zealand ones in there, the sandwich panels, steel framing, steel stud, and timber stud. Okay, so all of those are, are in there. Now, we've also changed the look of these walls a bit. And now, for example, the new walls are going to look like these. So here we've got brick veneer, here we've got solid brick, and uh, sorry, cavity brick, and here we've got solid brick. And they're matching existing wall types here in, uh, in light grey. And these fills that you can see in here are all hatches. Okay, so these are also classed. All of the walls are automatically classed now. So there are two sets of classes that get applied to walls, uh, well, to new walls, uh, not so much to, uh, and to, sorry, and to existing walls. So the uh, the overall wall will get a class like wall existing so if it was at any of these existing walls will go into the wall existing class uh, any external masonry wall like uh, this solid brick wall here would go into the wall external masonry and uh, brick veneer would go into the wall external veneer class then within those walls the components are also in classes so you've got external brick internal brick uh, the cavity which is what defines the the look of this cavity and in 3D you'd normally have that uh, that component uh, hidden so that the, the cavity was empty the, then we have the wall component existing so that's for these walls here and wall component frame which would be for this uh, brick veneer wall up here now all of these uh, component types have hatches as their fills and so you can edit these hatches and they've all got AU after them to know that they're Australian uh, and if we take a quick look at one of these styles so for example you might want to show this as new work and show the timber component here as yellow for your um, council submission so you could uh, look up the hatch in your document right click choose edit and currently you can see it has a background fill of grey so you could just change that background fill to a yellow color for example click OK oh sorry there's also the, um, the there are some lines in here so you'll need to change these to the same yellow which is there there's only one level in this click OK and you can see that that's changed to yellow and now all of the wall types will have changed to yellow so you could do this on a document wide basis or 
you could because these are using class styles you could go into the viewport and just edit the walls in a viewport where you wanted to present uh, a plan showing uh, new and existing work and so on for a council submission. So that's basically the organization of the walls. Now let's take a look at the the way that you can change from say seeing the full list to seeing the basic list or the uh, the bounded list. And we'll jump out to the finder here. Uh, so in the Vectorworks folder, Vectorworks 2015 folder, so on a Mac where we're looking in applications and then Vectorworks 2015 on a PC you'd be looking at your C drive, program files, Vectorworks 2015 and then once you're in the folder you're going to see these uh, similar sets of folder on Mac and Windows. So we're looking at libraries, then defaults, then we're going to scroll down to walls, slabs, and we want metric. You likely won't have an imperial folder. And then in here, you'll see that we have slab styles, which we're not going to talk about here, and we have wall styles. So that list in Vectorworks is currently being populated by the wall styles in this file here and in this file here. So if you, say for example, didn't want to see the New Zealand wall styles, just take this out and, and pop it up one level, put it in there. And let's say you would rather see the basic list here rather than the uh, the full list. So what we're going to do is to do the same with this, take this out, pop it in here, and then we want Wall Styles Australian classed basic. So let's open that. That's the one we want. Pop that back in here. And you've now switched this around to, to the basic classed list. And we'll now jump back to Vectorworks and hopefully this will have changed. Select the wall tool and you can see that this is now a much more simplified list and you might just want to use that list if you only tend to use a, a restricted set of wall styles, a lot easier to navigate. So I mentioned earlier in the movie about bounded wall styles and I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what these mean. So if you want to use bounded wall styles then typically you will be using stories and you will have uh, as a result a multi-story building. I mean there could be some benefit in actually using it in a single story building let's say uh, you know an office fit out or something like that where you, where you had walls at different heights that you possibly wanted to go back and and play around with later. Um, but here what we've got is a is a three-story building um, and when you have a story, within that story you can have um, various things that are called levels. And levels are things that your walls can be bounded to. So for example you could have a, a structural floor slab, so you could have some walls that went down to the structural floor slab, you could have a topping slab, so your internal walls might sit on top of the topping slab. Uh, your internal walls might only go up to the suspended ceiling, so you'll have a ceiling type level, you'll have a finished floor type level, um, and your outer walls may go all the way up to the underside of the structure above, uh, and so on. So you can set all of these things up uh, within stories, and um, you can see here on story one, it's telling us that there's story two and story three above it. Uh, in story two, you know, we've got story one below. Here's the details on story two. We've got story three above. And if we edit that, you can see in here that here we've got a ceiling at uh, 2500. We've got a finished floor that's 50 millimeters above the, uh, the structure, which is at zero. And uh, the bottom of structure is minus 150. So that's the underside of the um, concrete floor slab uh, and so on. So there's there's other types of levels and you can create levels of your own. But as I said this is not a, a definitive um, tutorial on, on using stories, it's just talking about bounded wall styles. So this is the setup that we've got. So let's take the wall tool and in rectangular wall mode we'll pick the uh, brick cavity and with the rectangular wall mode you can just draw a rectangle and it will immediately draw those four walls. Um, 
and I'm going to put a floor slab in here so I can take the slab tool and again uh, I've got a predefined uh, floor slab in here and in the paint bucket mode I can just click in there to put that in and I'll just send that to the back so just to look at what we've got let's go to a front view and so you can see here that with the bounded wall styles the outer uh, the outer component or uh, brick skin drops down lower than the internal brick skin and uh, the internal brick skin also goes up higher than the outer one. So and if we zoom in here you can see that the uh, the topping slab which is this little one here uh, just goes to the inside face of the inner brick wall and the concrete floor slab is defined to go to up to the cavity and so on. Um, so let's go back to a top plan view and fit to objects, just zoom out a little bit. So let's now jump up to the second level. And we'll now take the wall tool again and this time we're going to draw a brick veneer just to have something slightly different. And again we're using rectangular wall mode and we're snapping on there. Now I'm going to make the all but the active layer invisible. So we'll go to active layer only and now I can use the slab tool to put in a slab here. Just going to send that to the back. Alright, so let's now go to a front view and we'll turn all the layers on. So we'll go show snap others. And so now you can see that here we've got the slab that we just put in. You can see that this is slightly thinner, this uh, brick veneer wall, so it's it's not going uh, quite as far out. And so this is a, a basic setup where the walls have been responding to the uh, the bounding that, that has been defined. So these are bounded wall styles. So if we were to then take the wall tool again and say go to a timber stud wall and we'll just go back to the normal drawing mode and if I put in a a couple of stud walls on this level 2 and let's do the same on level 1 so again I'm just going to go to active only and we'll put in and we'll go back to show snap others and let's go to a front view now Just clear this up. So now you can see that the internal walls have been defined to sit on top of the finished floor. So they're sitting up here, same with the one down here. And the height of this wall has been defined at the ceiling level. Uh, and you see uh, that we set the ceiling level at uh, 2400 above the finish floor level and you can see that the height of this wall here is at 2400. So if I needed to change any of these uh, overall settings in our building, let's say for example that I wanted to push up the whole of this uh, first floor here, then I can go back into the stories dialog and you can see here that story 2 is starting at 3200 so what happens if I change that to say 3500 so let's click edit and put the story elevation to 3500 click OK and it's going to say well you want to move this story or you want to move all the story and the ones above it that's what we want to do so let's click OK and OK again and you can see that everything moved up in accordance with uh, the settings that we changed. So that's the benefit of using bounded ball styles because you can play around with levels and things and uh, and you can draw things and bound them to uh, to various um, to the various levels that you've defined. So then looking at how this uh, these bounded wall styles work, let's just have a quick look at one of the wall styles. So the brick cavity wall style for example so we'll find that in the resource browser, right click, choose edit and 
you'll see that um, that with the insertion options here we can set it for the overall wall so the top boundary is the bottom of structure of the story above and the bottom boundary is the top of the structure on our current level but you can also do this for the wall components so if we edit this wall component uh, you'll see that the component top can be relative to the uh, the top bound can be re relative to the ledge of the story above and that's where you're getting the set down and also there's a level type ledge um, which is controlling the outer um, leaf of this wall and the internal wall uh, is just going to the bottom of structure and the top of structure so that gives you an idea of how these uh, bounded wall styles can work.